Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for Money and Markets, uh, with you for our weekly marijuana market update. It's been another week, another great round of feedback from you guys. Really appreciate that. Thank you for it. Keep it coming. Remember, you can check out the marijuana market update on our YouTube channel as you're doing right now. Just go to youtube.com, search for Money and Markets. We'll be the one with the green logo. Just click on it and you'll find our, uh, our page. Make sure you subscribe and get alerted each time we, uh, we release a new video. Doing that will ensure that you actually get the information first before we put it up on the website. So it's kind of an insider thing. Um, also, we have the Bull and the Bear podcast. We do about two of those every week. You can find our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, about 20 other podcast syndicators. Uh, we're in the process of being added to Amazon, so you'll be able to listen to us via your connected speakers and devices. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast as well on any of those syndicators. You can get alerted when a new episode comes out. Just like with this marijuana market update, we post these to our channels usually before they hit the website. So you kind of uh, get uh, an advanced uh, advanced viewing of what we're going to put out on video uh, by, by subscribing and getting alerted. And it's all free, so who doesn't like free, right? Um, let's dive right into uh, this week's marijuana market update. Some of you have asked me uh, to look at Innovative Industrial Properties Incorporated. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange under IIPR. That's uh, Innovative Industrial Properties Inc. IIPR. Absolutely, more than happy to. First, let me give a little detail about the company, and I'm, I'm looking at some of my research over here, so I apologize. Um, it's a Maryland-based real estate investment trust, or REIT, R-E-I-T, that focuses on properties that are leased basically to experienced state licenses of cannabis operators that work in the medical cannabis space. So basically, um, you have to have a track record and you have to be state licensed uh, in, in medical cannabis, and then you can start working with a company like in Innovative Industrial Properties. But again, it is a REIT, um, and it's the only real estate company on the New York Stock Exchange that focuses on the cannabis industry. So it's, it's all by itself. Uh, before I get into the company specific, let me explain first what a REIT is. R really simple. It's just like a mutual fund. It pools capital from other investors to buy properties uh, and then in turn lease those properties out to, in this instance, medical cannabis companies to use for cultivation facilities and other operations, whether it be uh, logistical, whether it be delivery, it could be whatever, uh, but that, that's basically how they work. They allow investors to earn dividends from real estate investments without actually owning any property. It's a, it, it, they're good because it's a consistent bit of income and it can diversify your portfolio. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you there's a bit of a drawback to a REIT. Uh, they don't offer a lot of capital appreciation. By law, they have to pay 90% of their income back to investors. That's where the dividend comes in. However, that only leaves 10% of, of their remaining capital to invest and to buy new holdings. So it makes it a bit of a challenge when they're trying to expand their portfolio because they only have a limited amount of funds to do it. You also have to remember that if you invest in a REIT, it's taxed as regular income. Uh, in some instances, some REITs come with high management transaction fees as well. So there are pros and there are cons. It just kind of depends on what outweighs what in terms of what you're, what you're looking for and what your needs are with your investment portfolio. Now, specifically looking at IIPR, uh, the REIT owns about 61 properties, uh, and they're located across the country. Uh, Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New Jersey, Nevada, North Dakota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Big footprint. They are everywhere. Just about everywhere medical cannabis is legal, IIPR has some kind of a presence. Not in every state, but in most. Uh, what's more is that 99.2% of their square footage that they own is leased out. So that is, that's huge. That means they have very, very little space in which to lease out. Everything else is all occupied under lease terms. Um, and, and the average time left on those leases 16 years. Very impressive. They lease to companies like Pharmacan, uh, Ascend Wellness, Green Thumb, Cresco, which we covered uh, in a previous marijuana market update, uh, uh, True Leave, uh, along, uh, among many others that they actually lease to. Um, now, if we take a look at uh, Money Market's chief investment strategist, Adam O'Dell's uh, Green Zone rating system, which is what he uses to, to rate stocks over the broad market, uh, IIPR has an overall rating of 63, and that means that about 37% of all other stocks with a market cap of about $250 million or more rate better. That's not bad. It's really not bad, especially if you consider that this is in a cannabis space. Most cannabis stocks are small. They are penny stocks. They are volatile, and some of them don't have enough information to even rank. So um, to have her come out with a rating of 63 is very, very good, all things considered. 
And, and, you know, so the biggest standout for IIPR is the growth potential. On growth, IIPR rated an 85 on Adam's system. That means only 15% of the rest of the market is better. Even better. That, that, is, that is a really good metric to judge IIPR by. It's got a strong income of about $40 million, one-year annual sales growth rate of nearly 210%. That's massive. As you can see, I, I, I really like IIPR. I like IIPR for uh, several reasons. I'll tell you why in a bit. The stock is also right now in the middle of an uptrend. If you look at the chart for IIPR, um, first off, let me back up and say that momentum is one of Adam's favorite metrics to look at when, when, when judging stocks. So now, if you, look at the, if you look at the trend line and the stock chart for IIPR, you'll see that it is already on a forward trajectory. And that's what we like to look at. We like to look at stocks that are already in a momentum swing upwards. It's, it's very hard to judge when that momentum swing happens going up as the stock is going down. It could keep going down. It could bounce up. It could be a temporary bounce. It could. So what you want to look for is you want to look for a stock that is already on a nice upward trajectory and doesn't show much resistance to, to back off of it much. So, and that's what we see with IIPR. Um, in the 1st of August, uh, the, the uptrend has carried into August, and, and that's because the company had a very strong quarterly earnings report. Uh, the 1st of August, it reported a, a massive 183% increase in total revenues for the quarter. Uh, its net income available to shareholders rose by 322% from the prior year. Massive. So basically, its, in, its revenues for the quarter went up by 183%. The 90% that they have to divvy out to shareholders, that grew by 322%. So more money for shareholders. Uh, so if you're owning it, more money coming your way. That's great news for you, if you're, especially if you're looking for something in terms of like a dividend stock or, or something that will at least have some sort of payout, like a REIT or an ETF or, or something of that nature. In May and again in July, the company offered 4.6 million common shares, which generated net proceeds of about 370 million dollars. So this company um, does not have a problem with raising capital. And that's especially good because the cannabis sector is very capital starved. Very hard for cannabis companies to raise money right now. But IIPR being as what they are as a, as a REIT, not as a traditional cannabis company, seems to be able to circumvent that and not have much of a problem in raising capital for its operations. Uh, if you own a cannabis cultivation facility and you're seeing a substantial increase in demand, as most ca cannabis companies are, um, like I said, you likely don't have access to the capital you need to expand the facility. But this is where IIPR comes in. Um, not only do they just lease it out, it's not so easy as just, well, we own this property, we'll lease it out to you because you're in our space and that's it. They actually have the ability to take an expansion plan of a company, raise the capital to help the smaller cannabis companies grow. So normally these very small cannabis companies that a lot of you have asked me to look into are very, very small. If they're trading at 20 cents a share, 30 cents a share, even as low as a penny a share, they are very, very small. The big challenge is, is they don't have the ability to raise massive capital to widen their operations. Here's where IIPR comes in. If I'm, a, if I'm company A and I need to raise, and I need to expand my cultivation uh, facilities or uh, my operations in general by let's just say 50%. I have that much demand, I need to increase. I know I can't go to the market, I can't go to venture capitalists, I can't go really to banks, to anywhere, and say I need X amount of dollars to fund expanding my operations. What IIPR will do is I can go to IIPR and say, look, I'm already leasing some small space, but I need more, and here's why I need more. What they'll do is they'll actively go out and look for the space, raise the capital to buy it, and then put you in it and recoup their money based on lease payments. It's, it's actually a very, very good way uh, of helping out. It's kind of like lending a helping hand. You know, you see someone who's struggling, you want to help them out. IIPR does that, and they work very well with very small cannabis companies. That's also something that makes them very attractive to me. I really like that, that, that aspect of their business operations, and I like what that does. Um, now, you know, so you really can't do a whole lot better than that. And again, it's not like investing in a true cannabis company. It gets you into the sector, but in a different way. You're basically investing in real estate, but it's only specific to the cannabis industry. Now, think of it this way. It's going to take Congress a while, um, three years maybe, give or take, uh, to decide that federally legalizing marijuana is a smart thing to do, especially in times like now where cities and states are really struggling with slumping tax revenues. The time plays well 
for a company like IIPR because what it does, it allows them to continue to build out their, 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 their portfolio. They can essentially save that 10% and build out the property they own and then do it with above average yields, which they're doing right now. Uh, you know, I can see the net income uh, for IIPR really doubling between 2020 and 2021 to around $141 million. It could easily reach $200 million in, in, in income by 2023. That's 167% jump from its current level of $79, $79 million. So, but I think there's a lot of growth potential here for IIPR. Um, the stock recently reached a 52-week high of, a, of 120.99 last week. Um, it's backed off a little bit of that, but it's still around that 120 range, which isn't bad. A lot of analysts have put IIPR's target at around $150. That would be a 25% upswing in the stock price from where it is today. Not bad. And I would say if you're going to get into IIPR, now would probably be the time to do it. Because once it reaches $125, then it's going to be a little late. Your gains are going to be, are going to be minimalized. Um, anything below that would put you in good shape for double digit gains. So that's, that's really my take on IIPR. I think it's a great company. I think what they do is, is phenomenal, not just in the REIT space, but also in the cannabis space. Um, I think they're attractively priced. Uh, they've already grown. I think they show great momentum swings upwards. I think they've got great growth potential. And I think they have the potential for double digit gains if you were to get into it now. If you're already in it, I would hold it. I would stay. I would, I would stay the course. You may see some, some, some slight fluctuations, but I don't think it's going to really amount to a whole lot. I think there's a great upward trajectory here for IIPR, so I would stay in it. If you're not in it, it would certainly be worth your time to look and buy. Um, how much you buy, diversify your portfolio. Just be smart about what you're doing when you think about buying new stock. Um, so that, that's my take. One more thing I want to note. Um, you know, last week I talked about Cureleaf Holdings, um, a Massachusetts-based cannabis company. It trades over the counter, C-U-R-L-F, C-U-R-L-F. And I said I was bullish long-term on the company. I still am. And in fact, now I'm not the only one. On Tuesday, analysts at Cantor Fitzgerald joined me and they raised their price target on the company to $18 a share. That's a 91% upside from their current market price of just over $9 a share. So I'm not the only one who feels long-term bullish on, on Cureleaf. Cantor Fitzgerald is now jumping in and saying, we feel very good about this. We think over the next 12, 18, 24 months, this stock could reach $18 a share and see a 91% upside. They also upgraded the stock from neutral to overweight, which is great. Um, if you did miss that video, I talked about Cureleaf. I encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel, check it out. You can find it on our Marijuana Markets Update playlist. Remember, keep those recommendations coming. I love reading the feedback. It's been great, whether it's been in the YouTube comments or by email. You can email us any comments or questions or anything, you, you know, maybe a stock you'd like us to look at. You can email us at feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. That's feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We love to see that. I love it when readers get excited about, uh, when, when viewers get excited about talking about a certain stock or talking about the gains they're making. Love that. Tell me your story. What are, you, what are you seeing in the cannabis market? Do you, are you feeling bullish about things? Are you feeling bearish about things? Are there particular stocks that you're into now without divulging too much information that you are um, more excited about and are seeing strong gains? Let me know. We'd love to see that. Another, another reminder, if you're interested in listening to updates like these before anyone else, uh, just subscribe to our YouTube channel and then get alerted when a new, uh, when a new video is released because we usually post the videos before we put them up on our website, moneymarkets.com. So if you get alerted first on YouTube, then you're going to know instantaneously. You can go click it, you can view it, and you'll be able to see it before anyone else does uh, who sees it on our website. So the same goes for our Bull and the Bear podcast as well as for the week ahead. We usually post videos on YouTube or to our podcast channel uh, a day or so before they actually come out. Sometimes things are, are you know, they, they, these things have to be changed up a little bit. But uh, it, they, we usually do that a day or so before we put it on moneymarkets.com. So subscribing uh, to the channels, whether it be a podcast channel, podcast indicator, or on YouTube, is a great way to get that information first so you can take any action you feel like you need to immediately. That's about all for me for this Marijuana Market Update. Coming up this week, we'll have more on the Bull and the Bear podcast. I've got uh, We're going to talk about a, a particular uh, way to look at short-term investing. We're going to talk about that, so make sure you uh, want to be want to listen to that. That's going to come out later this week. Uh, our Money Markets Week Ahead will come out as well, so we'll let you know what's coming up next week on Wall Street so you can be prepared. Uh, check out moneymarkets.com every day for new content that provides safe and profitable investment information for you. Uh, until then, I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for moneyandmarkets.com and the host for uh, the Bull and the Bear podcast. Until next time, safe trading, everyone.